So the hardest thing about box plots is no one remembers how to use them and you all get kind of freaked out and confused. So they're really straightforward. In fact, when they ask about the range, that is probably one of the easiest things to understand. And, and even if you had no idea, even if you've never seen a box plot before, you might be able to just intuitively get this by kind of taking your best guess. So uh, we'll review all the parts, but for the purposes of just answering this question, what is the positive difference between the ranges of the number of books read over the summer for the two classes? Well, we want to look at the maximum and the minimum, which are given by what are sometimes called the whiskers, the box and whisker plot, the whiskers are here. So the maximum is going to be the one to the, the right in this case, and the minimum is gonna be the one to the left. So we're looking for the range, that's just the difference, right? So this is five, and this is zero, so the range for A is five minus zero, which is five, right? So remember, the, the way to calculate the range in general, let me put that uh, over here, range is the maximum number minus the minimum number. It doesn't matter whether it's presented on a box plot or a frequency chart or a histogram, it doesn't matter. The maximum minus the minimum is a formula formula for range that you need to memorize, okay? So with box plots, we're looking just at those whiskers then. So five minus zero, and then let's do it for a B, that's gonna be 10 and one. So that I think is where people are gonna make a mistake. You're gonna think 10 and one, and you're gonna go, ah, that's 10, because one to 10, right? That's 10. No, 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 you gotta do the math, right? 10 minus one is nine, okay? So what is the difference between these two things? Four, and that is the answer. So not hard, right? For a number 14, even in the first module, that's pretty easy math, right? It's literally just subtraction. Uh, but it can be hard because, again, we don't really work with box plots, for, box plots very often. Oh, they're hard to say. Uh, and so we get kind of flustered. So let's talk about what they mean. I'm going to zoom in on class B here and just do a little quick review of what a box plot is. So like I said, the end of the whiskers represent the maximum and minimum values in a data set. The only other thing you really, really need to know is that the middle part right there, the middle of the rectangle is the median, the median value. Now, if you don't know what that means, then you need a whole lesson on statistics. But the median value, remember, is if we arranged all the numbers uh, in order from least to greatest, the middle number is the median. So it's not the mean, right? The mean is the average. That does not appear anywhere on a box plot. We will never ever be able to know from a box plot the mean of a data set, okay? So that could come up. That could actually come up in a question where they're basically just asking you how box plots work and they're trying to get you to think, do box plots tell us the median or do they tell us the mean, the average? And no, nothing about average, we don't know. So the median uh, is the middle piece. Uh, these other parts are kind of like sub-medians, okay? So uh, what we there's different ways we can talk about them. Basically, uh, we can talk about it as the first or lower quartile. That's the kind of like end part right here where the box ends. And then this other side of the box, that is the upper, or let's be consistent, the third quartile. And so what that basically means is, well, you know, a median, right, is the middle value. So you have a, a row or a, a list of data sets, right, a list of data points, and the median is that middle. And basically what that's doing is taking your data set and it is chopping it into two halves, right? So you have the lower half to the median and then the upper half from the median to the end. What the quartiles are doing is basically chopping those in half again, right? So you've got your big set, then your half a set, and then the quartile is saying, okay, well, what's the middle of the middle, right? What's the middle of that lower half? What's the middle of the upper half? So it's it's kind of in the name, right? A quartile, quart means fourth. So we're dividing our set into fourths. And since everything on a box plot is about medians, the quartile is also about medians. So if we ever needed to calculate them, we would do it the same way we would do the median. We would split it, we would line everything up, we would find the middle number, and then from once we've got it, we kind of separate the two sets and then do median again and find the middle of each half. So it's very unlikely that you would need to do that for an SAT because box plots as it is are kind of like a very rare topic. They come up, but not very often. So mostly what you're gonna need to know is what I've shown you so far, right? The range, the maximum, the minimum, the median, right? But if this quartile thing does come up occasionally, you really gotta know it. And I, I would say the best way to remember it is if you just remember that in general, box plots are about medians, you're much more likely to remember what the quartiles are doing. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So from a box plot, we don't actually 
actually know what's going on with the rest of the data set. We can't find the average, like I said. We can't find the mode. We don't know even how many data points are in the set. So it's mostly just a, a way to kind of represent the, the way that this distribution works, but we don't ever know anything about the individual data points. So um, it's very limited in what we can, we can do with it, but that's good for us because then if the SAT asks about it, it's very limited what they can ask. So hopefully this little refresher will, will get you anything that you need in case box plots come up again on your real SAT.